Francisco. A spring day on the marina. A rendezvous in the afternoon? Perhaps. Only the most suspicious mind would have noted any details at all. of television presents DeForest Kelly starring in 333 Montgomery with Joanna Barnes after these messages. In all these years, you've never had a client on death row. Look, Master, why not keep it that way? I've also heard I important the Fremont side. It's an open and shut case. I've been told that, too, my dear Captain Quincy. Look, Piper had been bothering E. Fremont for weeks, following her on the sidewalk, phone calls, nasty little letters. The nerve reaching out of his class like that. Well, now, don't tell me it doesn't happen. He had a thing about her. He went to her home, broke in. Without leaving a mark on the door. Well, he picked the lock or something. Or something. No, knock it off, Jake. You don't have me on the stand. That's right. You're too good an officer to be giving me opinion when I'm asking for fact. According to E. Fremont, widow of victim Charles Fremont, suspect Frank Piper entered their home at approximately 2.40 April 7th and attempted to seize her while muttering lewd proposals. Her husband came to her assistance, whereupon suspect drew a 38 caliber pistol and fired three shots into husband, who continued grappling with suspect until he fell dead outside their home. Like Jake. This Piper's had trouble with Ryan before. He's a dirty little animal. I'd plead him guilty to that. But the charge happens to be murder. Tell me, Piper, why Eve Fremont? I, I guess with her being class and all, I was trying to improve myself. You were what? But this is how it happened, straight. We met at a North Beach bar. Maybe she was slumming, I can't say. But she knew what she was looking for. She liked me a lot, too. We met again every chance she got. Real class. I figured maybe some might rub off on me. Was she a little more class than you could handle? I tried to get rid of her. We had a fight. She promised to fix me good. A couple of days later, she called. Real sweet, said to come to our house. She'd single out the window when her husband left. I kind of went for that, you know? She'd never let me go to her place before. So the door's unlocked, I come in, she gives me the old smile, says to follow her. And all of a sudden, she gets with a scream and yells that I just busted in. And a man comes charging out from the living room, her husband. And, and I back away, she keeps yelling. I, I, I try to explain, and, and her husband keeps moving in. I try to get behind a flower pot or something, and he knocks it aside and keeps coming. So I pull my gun, I shoot him to the floor. And he keeps moving, moving into me, you know? And he's big, and I'm all shook up. So I let him have one in the chest. And he keeps coming like a water buffalo or something. So I hit him with two more, and he still grabs me. I gotta drag him clear outside before he lets go. There was no way out of it. He would have broke me in half. Four shots in all. The first into the floor. You're sure of that now? You fired one shot in the floor. If I cop out, I could maybe get life, huh? You can't deal, Piper. They want your hide. So... 
I'll take the case. What? What? Murder is the unlawful killing of a human being with malice of forethought. You tried to warn him off, then fired in the heat of quarrel without malice. Properly defined as manslaughter. That's the crime, that's all you're guilty of. Have I got any chance? I'll have to build an entire case on one bullet. Your life, Piper, is resting on that warning shot you fired into the floor. Now let's start all over again. Where did you first meet Eve Fremont? It was a place called Chappie's, North Beach Joint. She came in dressed to kill. Everybody turned to look. I sat down and I ordered some fruit juice. After a while, I noticed this Piper person sort of leering at me. Then I started uh, receiving notes, the same kind of proposals. And then he started following me and watching me and hurried down the stairs. And I knelt down. And when I saw that Charles was dead, that was when I went in and called the police. Thank you, Miss Fremont. Your witness, Counselor. Mrs. Fremont, would it confuse you if I started at the end of your story and then worked backwards? No, not at all. I thought not. Now then, Mrs. Fremont, in your original statement to the police, to the People's Exhibit A, you stated there were four shots fired by the defendant. And you're on the witness stand, you're testifying to three shots. Which is the truth? Well, I may have been a little confused that first day. Which is the truth? There were three shots. You're certain of that? Absolutely. As certain of that as every other detail of your testimony? Yes. The defendant pulled a gun, aimed directly at the victim. Bang, bang, bang. Just like that. Just like that. And you're determined he died for that act? Yes. Objection, Your Honor. Defense counsel is badgering the witness into the truth, Mr. Prosecutor. That is what we're all here for, isn't it? Prosecution is willing to provide expert testimony to the number of shots fired. When? Now! If you wish. Then I'll... Temporarily release this witness, Counselor. Fine. Step down, Mrs. Fremont. I call Captain George Quincy. Homicide. So we can take it your evidence disclosed three shots fired, three and three alone. That is correct. Your witness, Counselor. Frankly, I'm a little confused, Captain Quincy. Your complete testimony has concerned the number of shots fired into the victim's body. What about bullet holes in the room? You're referring to Piper's statement that he fired a warning shot? Yes, sir. Upon taking that statement, I personally checked the Fremont house inch by inch. There's absolutely no evidence that such a shot was ever fired. No evidence. That's correct. Let me state categorically that I have the greatest respect for Captain Quincy here. Both his professional ability and integrity. Which can only mean that my client is lying. So I now ask for a reasonable continuance while I consider whether or not I wish to be relieved as defense counsel. The golden age of television will continue in a moment. You can earn money just for walking on the beach. So I'm very wrong. I should be getting a phone call from Captain Quincy. Congratulating you, no doubt, on dropping Piper. You are, aren't you? A good legal secretary, Liz. 
believes nothing she sees and even less of what she hears. Look, Piper's not worth tearing yourself to pieces for. You know what he is. Well, I know he's guilty of manslaughter, but not of murder. A small legal difference we measure in cubic feet of cyanide gas. But a man who would force himself on a decent, respectable woman. Did he? This is a report on Eve Fremont, your decent, respectable woman. Three divorces. Um, fired from the Bay Club because of offbeat behavior in the swimming pool. And that little gambit in the mountain cabin there, now that's a... Oh, on second thought, that might be just a little gamey for such tender years. What kind of woman would do things like that? Kind of gets picked up in a North Beach joint. And who tries to use her own husband to get rid of her lover when she tires of the affair. And the kind who would see Piper die rather than to admit the sordid truth. You ought to take that report into court. And enter it on the grounds of what? E. Fremont's not on trial. But you've got to do something. You stood up in court and practically convicted Piper. Called him a liar. And focused the jury's attention on his only possible defense, that missing bullet. Now, if I can find it and have it in... Britain. Oh, hello, Quincy. Uh, don't mention it. It's a pleasure for me to tell the court just how much I do respect you, my dear Captain. But now I'd like to have you do something for me. Oh, I'd like to get into the Fremont home to... I know, Quincy, I know the place is sealed off, but you can take me in. But I don't have time for court order. The trial reconvenes in the morning. Quincy! you're interested, the officer on duty at the Fremont home is Jimmy Collins. Jimmy Collins? Remember? The one you umpired Little League with last year. Hmm. My dear Liz, do you think after being turned down by the captain that I would even be seen near the Fremont home? Be careful, you're not. Jake, please, now, this place is sealed off. I've got orders. If you think I'd plan to destroy evidence in here, throw me out. Oh, come on, now. You know I'm not saying you'd do something like that. Well, then help me find the truth, okay? Yeah. Fremont must have charged out of the living room here when he heard his wife scream. I'd guess Piper was standing about here when he first fired. You can see Fremont's bloodstains all over the floor. Yeah. Well, now, Piper said that he backed away first, and he got behind this flower pot. Yeah. Knocked off during the fight. You can see where it hit the baseboard here. Jake, there's absolutely no bullet holes in here. You're going to waste a lot of your time. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see, okay? Jake, do you realize what time it is? Oh, strange, isn't it? Bullet usually kills by ripping through the flesh. This one's gonna kill by not hitting anything at all, by disappearing. Well, will you disappear? My relief is due here any minute. There's just one logical answer, Jake. He lied to you. What's that? He lied. Oh. Oh, you, you said logic. I've been down on my hands and knees using muscle when I should have been using my brain. Come on, you're gonna help Jake, me. I'm you're begging you. Fremont, now get in there. You're Charles Fremont, now you're coming at me, now come on. I'm surprised, I'm frightened, I'm backing up. I instinctively get an object between us, a flower pot. You shove it aside, it hits a wall board. I pull my gun, fire a warning shot. Jake, will you please? There's my relief. Jake, come on, get out of here. You're gonna get me in a jam. What a 
did you say? I said, I think I was wrong about you. I think you found that. Oh, thank you. I think you found that bullet hole in the floor, sitting in the rug, isn't it? In 22 years here, you ever see me hide one shred of evidence? It's always a first time, Quincy. I'll let you have one right in the mouth. We're going to go to the Fremont place together here. I'm going to make you go over that room with me. Every fiber of that rug, mister, until you apologize. Well? Hey, maybe it hit the wall here somewhere, huh? You see a hole in the wall? Look for yourself. Maybe it's painted over. Do you see any fresh paint? There's not one mark on that wall. Just that one small dent made when that flower pot fell. Just got your word. That's a dent. It could be where somebody put it over a bullet hole. Does that look like a bullet hole? Look for yourself. Do you, do you see any putty? Piper's there. if I found this bullet myself. It's lucky for you I sealed off this scene, put a policeman outside. If you had ever wandered in here alone and found this slug, that jury had never believed in a thousand years you hadn't planted it. This is the bullet fired by the defendant's gun. You heard Captain Quincy testify to that. Now, is there any doubt that this shot was fired as he backed away, surprised, in panic? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, a man intent upon murder doesn't fire a warning shot. Now, what was Frank Piper's real intention there in the Fremont home? Did he enter by force or by invitation? We've heard two stories, two versions of the relationship between a man and a woman. E. Fremont tells us that she was being bothered, being followed, suggestive phone calls, letters. But did she go to the police? She tells us she didn't. She testified that she assumed that he would tire of his efforts and see the futility of it. And the prosecutor, in his arguments, assures us that a woman of her position, her cool and assured beauty, would not consort with men of the streets. It would be unreasonable, he tells us. That man and that woman, well, now, we buy that, don't we? This is an ordered world. Queens never consort with commoners. This is a logical world. Men of great wealth never steal from those less fortunate. And this is a reasonable world. Nations do not go out and wage a war under the banner of a prince of peace. Or do they? Or is this a most unreasonable world? Isn't it a fact? that we live in a strange, disordered society which prohibits the taking of a human life on one hand and then compounds that evil by taking the killer's life in an even more deliberate, cold, and cruel manner. Isn't it a fact that you just heard from the lips of a police expert how by unreasonable coincidence a falling flower pot happened to open a crack in a baseboard? and how a warning bullet fired without aim happened to pass through that crack without touching either side. And then, during the struggle, by unreasonable coincidence, that crack was kicked closed. And now, 
you are being asked to find on a case to determine whether or not Frank Piper went there with malice in his heart intending to kill beyond a reasonable doubt. What is reasonable? What is unreasonable? Did a man die because of an angry finger on a trigger, or did he die because of a beckoning finger in a window? Tell us by your verdict. Has the jury reached the verdict? We have, Your Honor. Now please hand your verdict to the clerk. We, the jury, find the defendant, Frank Piper, Guilty of manslaughter. I want to thank the ladies and gentlemen of the jury for their service. You're excused until further notice. The court will convene at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning for sentencing. You did it. Well, the judge will say 1 to 10 tomorrow. I guess you know that, though. So I'll be a little older and maybe a little wiser. Well, look me up then. Thanks a lot. I'll do what I can. Congratulations, Counselor. How about lunch tomorrow at the Palace? Twelve o'clock? Twelve o'clock. Next, check into Amanda's for a hilarious half hour of comedy with Emmy winner B. Arthur. Next.